Okay, in this presentation we're going to look at a couple of worked examples of inverse Laplace transforms. In this uh, set of examples we are going to use a, st uh, a, a tables, a formula sheet that of Laplace transforms, so f of t and the corresponding f of s uh, in um, my website mathsresource.com. Just as a remark actually, this is the first question. I, I it is common to use in the question f of s, but I'm just going to change notation to g of s, g for given in the question, and I'm going to reserve f of s for something to do with the formula sheet. So if you see f of s or f of t, specifically what you should be looking at is thinking about there is the formula sheet. Uh, so g of s equals s over s squared minus 2s plus 1. What you should always try and do in a situation like this is to factorize the, the, the denominator. Here it's a pretty easy uh, factorization. Uh, s squared minus 2s plus 1 is s minus 1 squared. If, you, uh, if you're not um, comfortable factorizing uh, quadratic terms like that, I think it's probably best to actually sort of concentrate on that first and come back to this sort of thing. So, uh, factorize the denominator. Now, s squared minus 2s plus 1. So, what we have here is the expression s over s minus 1 squared. Okay. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a little trick. And the reason for that will become clear shortly. I have an expression here. Oops. s minus 1. Okay, and I have an expression up here, s. Now, just to be clear about something, you, there's actually a couple of other ways you can do this. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to express s as s minus 1 plus 1. Okay, s minus 1 plus 1. Now, the reason for that will become clear shortly. The re uh, well, actually, I'll tell you what the reason is. Uh, the reason is I'm going to use one of the shifting theorems. Okay, so there's two shifting theorems. This is the first one, and this is the second one. Okay, what I'm going to do is I have I, could, I have I see that I have this expression here f of s minus a. If I can write a function in terms of s minus a coefficient, uh, the inverse Laplace transform is quite easy to find. Okay, so that's what I'm thinking here. I have this expression here, s over s minus 1 squared. I want to write this as a function of s minus 1. Okay, so what do I have to do there? I have to sort of solve this value, or solve for f of s minus, or I have to resolve the, the numerator. I have to resolve s. I have to express that uh, in terms of s minus 1. So that's what I've done here. s equals s minus 1, there we have it there, plus 1. So g of s, actually I should use capital G there, g of s is s minus 1 plus 1 over s minus 1 squared. Okay, that's how I might would re-express it. Now g of s is actually, I'm going to write this now as in the context of a function of f of s minus 1. So we're going to get rid of g of s there and we're going to let that equal to that um, equate to f of s minus 1. Okay, so we have s minus 1 plus 1 over s minus 1 squared. So in the form of f of s minus a, what does that make a? What, uh, or how, what does that make the 1, s minus 1? Well, it's in the form of s minus a with a equal to 1. Pretty easy. Okay. Now, this is f of s minus a up here, s minus 1. And again, let's get rid of that g of s. What I'm going to do here is replace each, I need to find f of s. Why do I need to find f of s? Let's go back to the tables here. 
The inverse Laplace transform is e to the at times f of t. Okay. Now, the inverse Laplace transform of f of s is f of t. Okay. But I don't have f of s. I have f of s minus 1. That's what we have. f of s is what we need to find f of t. So what do I do there? I'm going to replace each term, where I, each instance where I find s minus 1, and I'm going to replace it with s. Okay, so f of s, let's just go over that again, s minus 1, so just replace that with s, over s plus, uh, s plus 1, over s minus 1 squared, that's s squared. Okay, now I've done it up here, but I'll just sort of expand that out again. We have uh, we can actually expand that out into two terms. We can expand, uh, say that, uh, express that as s over s squared plus one over s squared. S over s squared, you can cancel that out to one. Get rid of that. So we have one over s plus one over s squared. Okay, there we have it there. Now, this is pretty easy to find the Laplace transforms of that. So, just get the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s, that's just 1, and we get the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared, that's simply t. Now, that's f of t, okay? Now, the, in, the Laplace transform, the inverse Laplace transform we're looking for is g of t, and that is in the form e to the t. Remember that. Remember the shifting theorem. It's the other part there. e to the at. So the answer is e to the at times f of t. And so that is e to the t times 1 plus t. Uh, just as a remark, it's good form to write it. Or it's, uh, you should put in t greater than or equal to 0. So that's the answer we're looking for. g of t, the inverse of Laplace transform. What we were looking for is e to the t times 1 plus t, or you can expand it out a bit. Uh, just as a remark, there's actually probably other ways of doing that, uh, other techniques, and we'll come to that shortly. I just sort of want to briefly, this is a part of my worksheet, so I'm just going to sort of briefly go through this one. The only difference with this one is that we have s plus 1 squared. Um, actually, I think that might make a good bit of difference, actually. So, this is similar to the last one. Rather than s plus 1 squared, we had s minus 1 squared. So, s plus 1 squared plus 2s plus 1 is s plus 1 squared. Necessarily, what we're doing is the same trick. s plus 1 minus 1. So, actually, sorry, g of s is s over s plus 1 squared. Again, we want to write this as a function of s plus 1. Okay, we're doing s plus 1 this time. Um, so, uh, what we're going to do to resolve s is just make that s plus 1 minus 1. Okay. Now, this is in the uh, form f of s minus a equal uh, with a equal to minus 1. By the way, actually, if you do, if you find this bit uh, hard to see on YouTube, uh, what you might do there is actually go full screen mode. Now, uh, same trick again. This time, a is equal to minus 1. And we have, uh, we're using the shifting theorem again. Okay. So we can resolve f of s is essentially f of s. We have uh, f of s plus 1. Uh, and re replace each term here, or each instance of s plus 1, with an s to get. Uh, let's write that again. That's uh, that. This is f of s here. So, uh, sorry, it's s minus one. So s o s over s squared minus one over s squared is uh, one over s minus one over s squared. And there we get it. Get there. Same thing again, really. Uh, uh, just it's part of the worksheet. So now. This is a bit of a different one. Find the inverse. This is a new one again. Now, this is my third one. 1 minus s over s squared minus 2s. 
Now what I could do there is factorize the denominator and I have s times s minus 2. Okay. Um, so there's a couple of techniques I could uh, work with there. Uh, but what I'm going to do actually in this particular instance is I'm going to try a, a technique called uh, partial fraction expansion. Now, uh, partial fraction expansion is a bit of a heavy-handed approach for something like this. You probably look at that and thinking, well, do you need to do that? Do you, there's other techniques you can use. That's true, and I've used them in other presentations. But what I want to do actually is sort of squeeze in partial fraction expansion somewhere. The reason is that there are uh, exercises, there are sort of problems that do ter do arise where other things don't work, so partial fraction expansion would work. Okay. So what we have here is we're going, so I'm going to sort of just use this opportunity to include partial fraction expansion. And again, it is a heavy handed approach. Uh, there are other techniques, but I just, I want to actually cover that for once, at least once. So remember that S squared minus 2S is equal to S, S minus 2. So partial fraction expansion requires us uh, we have an undetermined coefficient a and an undetermined coefficient b. So what we're going to do is we have this single expression here and we want to break it up into two parts. We ha want to have a over s as one, part, uh, one term and b over s minus 2 as the second term. Okay. So how, what do we, how do we find out what a and b are? So here we have a and b again. And what we're going to do here is actually cross multiply them back into each other such that we have cross multiplication a times s minus 2 and b times s that's cross multiplication multiply those terms out and then multiply the uh, terms below s times s minus 2 okay so s a s minus 2 plus b s we just working it out we get a plus b s minus 2 a and that's over s squared minus 2s. Okay. Now, there's a good bit, uh, a partial fraction uh, expansion is a good bit of work. I'm sort of just breezing through it here at the moment. But it's just a bit of a revision for it. So solving for a, we get a equals b equals a half. Where did that come from? Let's go back here. Remember, uh, this is equal to a plus b s minus 2a all over s squared minus 2s. Necessarily s is equal to a plus bs. We're matching the coefficients. So necessarily, I'll just write it down here, a plus b is equal to 1. As in s equals a plus bs. So a plus b must equal to 1. The other one, minus a, is equal to minus 2a so a is equal to 1 or sorry a is equal to 2a is equal to whoops 2a is equal to 1 a therefore is equal to a half and going back to the first one if a plus b is equal to 1 therefore b is a half also So a equals b equals a half. So the expression we have here is a half times 1 over s plus a half times s minus 2. So that's a over s plus b over s minus 2. Okay. Now, all we have to do is get the inverse Laplace transforms of both of those. The inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s is simply 1. And the inverse Laplace transform of s minus 2, if you look at the tables, is e to the 2t. Okay, and so that answers that one. It's actually not a hard one. Sorry, there it is again. That's the tables. It's table entry number 4. So 1 over s minus 2. If a is 2, that means the inverse Laplace transform of that is e to the 2t. Um. I have these these tables numbered actually since now. My thing is jamming up. Uh, 
I think it's uh, jammed up. So what I'm going to do is actually just call that a show. Call it a wrap. All this uh, software is... There we go. There's an alternative approach there that uh, essentially just uh, separated out into two terms and actually no I'll just no I won't uh, I'm just my, my machine is breaking down so I'll just leave that for another time bye